Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. One of the most ubiquitous things in 40K is the Power Sword. Most of the 40K factions have some version of this weapon. The Force Weapons of the Grey Knights, the Space Wolves' Frost Blades, the Necrons' Hyperphase Sword. The Eldari and Drakari have a half dozen Power Sword variants. The Ghost Swords, Dire Swords, Mirror Swords, Power Blades, Claves, the Crystal Swords. And even if you collect one of those lame factions who just use regular old non-powered Thords, it's still a good rule of thumb to shove in some heavy contrast into that blade to get a nice shiny look. But what is a power sword? Well, it's actually a completely normal sword with some dark Age of Humanity tech, a disruptor field emitter. And what that does is it projects an energy field around the impact point of the weapon that can disrupt the molecular bonds of whatever it touches. It's nothing like a lightsaber. It can cut through anything. Well, I guess it is sort of like a lightsaber, but instead of a laser cutting, it's an energy field that pushes matter aside. And it can be built into anything, hammers, axes, fists. It's hilariously used to make the chain fist, a weapon that combines the impossible power of the disruptor field and a chainsaw, a weapon that would be certainly inferior, but when combined creates the ultimate anti-armor weapon. And how to paint this disruptor field? Well, these weapons are described as crackling with electricity. So I'm gonna paint them with waves of blue moving up the sword with a base blade of black and the highest highlights white. I set up my palette with blue, black, and white. Keeping it simple, I mixed the colors to make some transitions. I started out by base coating the sword blue using two thin coats. Then I laid out where I want my highlights to go, painting white in the middle and on the top and bottom of the blade edge. Then I did the same thing with black, painting this on the inside tip of the sword, the middle of the edges, and the bottom. The opposite spots I did white so the black and white are next to each other. Then I went in with those transition colors I mixed up, painting stripes of these colors in between the black and the white, and this will be the basis for my transitions. Then I went back in with the blue color and thinned it down to where it was mostly water. I painted this over the transitions. After about three or four coats, it smoothed over those lines. Then I did the same thing, this time making a super thin white that I glazed over the white parts into the blue, going little by little, painting it on, letting it dry, and then doing another coat. After that, I did the same thin glazing of black, putting this over the black parts into the blue. Now you might be done here, but if you like me, maybe went a little too hard with the black and white, then you can go back in with a blue glaze to bring it back to the original color. And now the color transitions are all there. It's time for some edge highlights. Pure white. I put this on the edge of the blade and carefully outlined where the sword blade tapers to the edge. This will also help a lot of the sloppiness around the edges. The only thing left was a coat of gloss varnish. You can swap out these colors to get a variety of effects, like the green and black on the Xenophase blade. I think a power sword is the perfect opportunity to try out a color transition with whichever method you prefer, building up colors, blending, or glazing. It's a small detail, but if you can do it, you'll unlock a whole new way of painting. All of a sudden, you can make armor panels, alien skin, or capes look epic by working in lots and lots of contrast. And if you screw up, just paint over it, try again. And if you really screw up, you can even put on some isopropyl alcohol, which will soften the acrylic paint, wipe it off on a paper towel, and give it another try from scratch. Give it a go. And speaking of things that are worth a try, our Patreon. Over there, we have original miniatures in our Miniature of the Month Club. We also have high quality Wargaming Terrain STLs hosted by Comics, Games, and Things, viewer model critique videos, a weekly hobby hangout live stream, and more. It's the best way to support us, so head on over to Patreon to get access to even more Eons of Battle. We also have merch linked in the description. I hope you all give power weapons a try. Thanks for watching.